Hey TNT and welcome to this week's TNT lesson online. I'm glad that you've joined me. I hope that you're doing well and able to enjoy the sun when it's out and the warmer temperatures that we're having uh, for the most part. Uh, and uh, I hope that you are ready to dig into God's Word today and to look at what section 4.4 has for us. So you can see up on the screen here that it talks about our section title, and our section title is called Grace to Forgive. And so we're going to connect a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about. That's what I love about this last unit, is we're really connecting things together, things that we've been talking about all year long, but also in our own lives today and, and how we see this played out. So it's one thing to look at how God has forgiven us through His grace, but it's another thing then to look at how we are called to forgive others and to show God's grace. Have you ever had a really hard time to forgive somebody? Maybe somebody did something that, that you just really had trouble forgiving them for it. Remember, that doesn't mean that we're necessarily forgetting, but it means that we're not holding it against them. We're not talking to other people about what's happened. Uh, we're not dwelling on it. We're, we're moving past it. Uh, and so uh, God forgives us in His grace. And so that's what our section looks at today. And so maybe you can relate to this difficulty to forgive somebody. I know for me, I've had to struggle with this at different times in my life. Uh, it's still something that I struggle with from time to time today. Uh, and so you're not alone in that, but we want to look at the perfect example of forgiveness for us. And that was Jesus, right? And how God has forgiven us because of what Jesus has done. So hopefully you're there with me in your book, section 4.4. We're on page 212. Uh, so this first slide just sort of tells us a summary. God forgives all of our sins when we trust Jesus as Savior. Remembering how we were forgiven can help us to forgive others. Remember, it's something that we are that we are forgiven for, which is great, but then we are showing others that same forgiveness. All right. Our memory verse for this week is Ephesians 4:32, which says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving others, just as in Christ God forgave you. All right, that's an awesome verse. It's actually a verse that I've tried to memorize myself. Uh, I had to check at the end, just didn't want to mess it up there. But um, that's a great verse. It talks about kindness and compassion, all right? But then it also talks about us forgiving each other just like, and this is actually your first question, based on that verse, we should forgive, forgive others like whom? Do you remember? Like God, right? Like God has forgiven us in Christ, right? It's because of what Christ has done on the cross that we can have forgiveness in our relationship with God. Uh, but it's God who has forgiven us, okay? So there's one example in the Bible that our, our uh, one person in the Bible that really deals with this forgiveness and shows us even though some people can do like the worst thing to you, you still have the ability and the, and the choice to forgive them or not. And that person is Joseph, all right? So our next slide here tells us, and the next question there in your book tells you to turn to Genesis 37 and look at the story of Joseph. Now, I'm not going to read those five verses that are listed there. Oh, gee, I'm tired. Um, I'm not going to read those five verses that are listed there because I hope that you have. But to summarize them, our, our question is in the book is what happened to Joseph? All right, what happened to Joseph? And if you read those, or if you know the story of Joseph, you know that Joseph was basically his brothers didn't like him. Uh, he was his dad's favorite, and he kept talking about it, and it kind of got annoying to them, and so it got so bad to the point where they were going to throw him into a really deep hole that he couldn't get out of, and they were just going to leave him there, which is really mean. But they chose to do something that's also mean, but not quite as, um, it wouldn't necessarily kill Joseph, okay? And so they decided to sell him as a slave, okay? So they sold their brother as a slave. And so they made some money off of it. Uh, and one of brother, Joseph's brothers actually encouraged his, his other brothers to do this because he didn't want him to die. They, he wanted to show some kindness and compassion to him. Maybe not enough, but some, okay? And then you come around to the next passage that your book talks about, which is Genesis 50, verse 20. This is one of my 
favorite verses in the Bible. So imagine if you were treated this way by your brothers, left for dead and then sold to other people. Um, thankfully, we don't do that anymore. We don't see people as property. Um, and so that's a good thing. Um, but that's a really hard thing to experience. And then to be able to have an opportunity, if you know the story of Joseph, you know that Joseph uh, works his way back and by the grace of God has an opportunity to provide for his family. Uh, there's, there's a famine and food is really hard to come by. And Joseph is second in command of all of Egypt at this point. And his brothers come to him looking for food. And this is what Joseph says to them in verse 50, or chapter 50, verse 20. He says, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. And so what Joseph is doing is he's not holding that sin against his brothers. He's not treating them worse or different because of it. He's telling them that God is working even that sinful choice that they made for good. So Joseph is forgiven his brothers. And he's telling them that God has a plan. That God had a plan in the past when they sinned. God worked it for good, but God also has a plan in preserving his family and saving his family ultimately because of the famine. That's a really hard thing to imagine, forgiving your brothers or your family when they've done something that crazy. All right. All right. The next passage is to look up. We're flipping over onto our other page. Other page is 213. Uh, 213, which actually the last question was on that page too. 213 has us looking up Luke chapter 24, verse 30 or 23, 34. It says, um, well, let's read the question first. Jesus is our example. What did he say while he was hung on the cross? Uh, and so verse 34 says, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. So that was speaking of the people that were crucifying him. So Jesus is actually asking God to forgive them while he's on the cross, which is the, a really painful way to die, if not one of the most painful ways to die. Jesus was thinking about other people and was willing to forgive them, even though they were the ones that were causing him great pain, and ultimately his death, okay? So Jesus is an example for us. And so what I have written here on the screen is just what the verse says. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. That is a crazy example. And so when we look at showing forgiveness, we can talk about that as grace. When we're, or sorry, when we're choosing to forgive somebody, we are showing them grace. Jesus is doing that. He's giving them a gift that they don't deserve, right? He's asking for God to forgive them, which is something that they did not earn. Those soldiers there and the people that crucified Jesus did not deserve to be forgiven. But God showed grace to them. Jesus shows grace to them in giving them and allowing them to have forgiveness. And that's huge, right? So you and I, what can we learn? How, how is it that we can show grace to others? We can forgive people. We can forgive people. Now, we're not saying that their sin might not hurt. We're not saying that their sin might not have costed us uh, or caused us pain or difficulty, but their sin is still something that God can forgive. And when we offer forgiveness too, we are showing them the love of God and Christ. So there's just a couple questions up here on the screen. When we accept Christ as our Savior, which of our sins are forgiven? We know the answer, right? It's all of them. None of our sins are like, oh, nope, that's too severe. That's too, that's too tough, Lord, uh, or, or buddy. Sorry, we're not forgiving that sin. God doesn't do that, right? God shows us grace all across the board. And then we talked about this one a, li a little bit already. Do we deserve to have our sins forgiven? Why or why not? Well, we don't, right? I don't deserve to have my sins forgiven because I'm a sinner. And I need the grace of God to be forgiven. It's a gift all the way through. Just like it is a gift for you to be forgiven by God. And so for me to say that you don't deserve to be forgiven, 
would be wrong because I don't deserve to be forgiven either. Okay? And so we can show love by forgiving each other. And so the last question there is, knowing how much you have been forgiven by God when you accept Jesus as your Savior, how will this affect the way that you respond to others who need forgiveness? You've been forgiven so much, so you should be able and ready to forgive others because of how much you've been forgiven. And that's a hard thing, right? So this week, I want to challenge you. If somebody sins against you uh, or you're really struggling with somebody that sinned against you in the past, show them forgiveness and in doing so, grace and the love of God. So thanks for listening today. Uh, I hope that you've been encouraged and challenged a little bit by this idea of forgiveness and the grace of God and seeing God's grace in his forgiveness of us, but then also seeing how we can show grace in forgiving others. So that's all we got for section 4.4. Next week, we'll check out section 4.5, and we'll continue to talk about grace in action and what that looks like. Thanks for listening, and have a great week. Bye.